All right, how do I learn electronics? I hear this question all the time. How do I learn electronics? And I'm going to be very honest today and tell you how I learned electronics. And this is dead serious. This is how I did it. Maybe it'll work for you. Maybe other people are different, but this is how I learned electronics. I do not have a, uh, any formal training in electronics at all. I never took a double E class. Um, I have a science degree. I think I mentioned I have a physics degree, but that doesn't teach you, that doesn't teach you circuits. Like I could do Maxwell's equations, but that doesn't do you any good in putting together an op amp. You know, what's Maxwell's equations have to do with an op amp? It won't, it won't do you any good at all. And um, what I found was there, um, for me, it was all self-taught. So everything I know, everything I've taught, it's all been self-taught, see other people do it, try it, read about it, teach yourself, and like I say, continually teach yourself. This is an insight and um, it feels to me, it feels to me, it makes me a little vulnerable, but I want to be very honest in how I believe you can teach yourself electronics. It's almost, it's not like, like uh, anybody can cook, right? <laughs> that kind of thing. All right. So how, how did I learn electronics? Well, it was out of curiosity. As a kid, I was very, very curious about everything. And I was very, very curious about electronics. And any time I could try to something out, I tried something out. I didn't know what I was doing. I fiddled maybe with the radio to make it sound funny or take something apart just to see how it was inside, right? Um, I had uh, curiosity in electronics, and so I got into ham radio. And ham radio, I think, is where I probably learned the most about electronics, not because of the radio itself, you know, Morse code's not going to teach you electronics, but it's because of this one book, all right? And I've showed this book before, um, and uh, it is the uh, ARRL handbook, okay? And uh, this is a great book. It's very inexpensive on the used market, and um, it has a whole bunch of great stuff in here. And so while, what I want to do today is just kind of pick something out and kind of I'll show you what I what I did. How, how I learned, okay? So let me rearrange things a bit. All right, so just go to a page, <laughs> whatever is interesting you at the time, okay? So let's say you learned about oscillators, but now you want to learn about op amps and you go, okay, uh, I know op amps can do different things. And oh, here's, here's something that op amps do, okay? And so let's take a look at that, All right? And these are simple active filters, right? Uh, what does it mean to be an active filter? Well, an active filter has electronics in it. You can make filters out of just passive components, just resistors and capacitors and inductors and stuff. But a lot of times that throws away signal and you want to keep that signal. And so you put some gain in, in the... Uh, in the mix. And so you put these op amps in there. And if you take a look at these, well, the op amps really aren't doing much. They, they're just all inverting amplifiers. Inverting amplifier, inverting amplifier, inverting amplifier. You know, that, that, that's all these things are doing here. And, and you can look down here and say, oh, ooh, here are some even more complicated uh, circuits down here. All right. And these are filters too, but they're much more complicated than these. What, what are they doing? Well, in, in, in all reality though, look, not inverting amplifier, non inverting amplifier, um, buffer, right? They're, they're very simple things. And then they put these passive components to do, to do the other things, right? So, um, what I would do is I would look at this and I would see these equations. Now, I think one of the biggest, um, disservices the educational system does is to emphasize the math too early. Um, eventually, maybe you'll need to get there, but you know, some people will never need to get here. Um, and I believe that the way that it's taught, they will throw equations at you and not tell you where the equation came from. They just say, well, here's an equation and memorize it. Um, 
And then you learn how to put numbers in the equations and you'll get numbers out the other side of the equation and you'll pass the test and get good grades. But you really won't ever understand what's going on. Um, and I really believe that for me, it was more important to understand everything at a gut level, okay? And maybe that's why I'm maybe good at teaching simplistic ideas. Maybe I'd be a complete failure teaching tensor calculus, right? But I, I understand how to look at something and intuitively, intuitively kind of figure things out. So, you know, if all you want to do with electronics is maybe fix things, you know, you'll never design it. But you need to know enough to fix it. And those are two different things. Um, and rarely are there educational systems that will teach you the basics of things in a clear way. So anyway, so, so this is how I taught myself, right? Let's take a look at these three things here. And um, here's an op amp, and it's got some R's and C's and stuff. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it work. I'm going to do, okay? If, if, I, if I have one word of wisdom on learning, it's do. <laughs> Don't wait, okay? You'll be waiting for Godot. Um, go ask your literary friend what that means. Um, so, um, do. So, here's an op amp. Find an op amp, doesn't matter which one. Hook it up and put some resistors and capacitors around it. Don't go to the equations. Don't go try to figure the math out. Don't do any of that stuff. Just put stuff in. See what happens, right? You're not going to break anything. And if you do break anything, who cares, right? So this one's got two R's and a C. So what values am I going to use? Well, I'm going to use my favorite resistors. Remember, I asked the question once before, what's your favorite resistor? Minus 10K. I don't know. I just like it. 10K. <laughs> Um, and I've got 5,000 of these capacitors on a reel. And so I'm going to use those because they're my favorite capacitor because I've got 5,000 of them. Got to do something with them. So I'm going to use 10K and 0 0.01 microfarads, right? These are 0 0.01 microfarads. Do I know what frequency this is going to do anything at? No, I have no clue, right? But let's hook it up and let's go see what it does, okay? And so let's go ahead and hook this one up first, right? And what does it say it is? A. Uh, a. It says it's a low pass filter. Okay. All right. It's supposed to be a low pass filter. I don't know. I'm going to hook it up. All right. So let's, let's hook this up. All right. So here's my little breadboard, you know, use these little breadboards. They're great. And I just put some components in and we'll, we'll turn it on. Um, so you may be fortunate that your oscilloscope can do fancy things, but if it can't do fancy things, then, then don't be discouraged about that. Um, uh, just do it, you know, a little bit at a time, okay? So let's, uh, let's say, so I'm gonna put some signal into the front and that'll be our yellow and we'll get some signal out of the back end. That'll be our cyan. And remember it's an inverting amplifier. Remember I pointed it out. So is it an inverting amplifier? Well, absolutely, look, it inverts. And you might even see a little bit more detail here. You can say, wait a minute, it's not quite right, okay? This isn't quite right. Um, people say I should change my scope. But, um, so you can take a look at this and you can go, okay, it's inverting, but they don't line up right. If it was just 180 degrees out of phase, they would line up. So there's a phase change here. Well, that's interesting. I wonder why there's a phase change, right? You don't know why. It just does it. And, and maybe that's interesting. Maybe that's not interesting. Okay. Um, but it does that. So it's something to kind of squirrel away. Why is there a phase change? And do I care? If I'm just going to send music through it, I don't care. Right? It's going to run a speaker. I don't really care about phase. And when I started using electronics, I never worried about phase. In fact, I still don't. <laughs> you know, all these years, I don't care about phase. For the kind of stuff I've done, I've, I've rarely, rarely, rarely ever cared about phase, right? All right. So we're at one kilohertz here. And uh, we can change that frequency, right? Let's put this back on run. Um, we can change it down to... Uh, uh, let me do what people say I should do. Menu, hold off. They say should I should put in some hold off here and that will help my triggering. Yeah, I don't think it's going to. I think, I just don't think it, it helps at all. <laughs> there, is, there is noise reduction. I can put in, I can put in uh, uh, noise reject. That helps a lot. The other thing that I've seen that helps 
um, is to limit the bandwidth of my scope. I'm never going to go very fast, so I'm going to change my bandwidth here to, to uh, 20 megahertz, right? Sorry if I'm in the way of the camera here, but I'm going to change my bandwidth on these uh, traces here to be uh, to be 20 to be 20 megahertz. Okay, there we go. Anyway, I'm going to change the uh, frequency. I'm going to change it down here to 400 hertz, and I'll go higher and higher and higher. Oh, it's getting smaller. Why is it getting smaller? Okay. It starts out big and then it gets smaller and smaller. Well, it's a low pass filter. So it means that high frequency stuff is going to be attenuated and sure enough, it goes down. Okay. So, you know, low frequencies, big, high frequencies, small. And so, oh, okay. That's what a low pass filter does. Right. And so you can learn doing it this way. You could inject a signal and put it into a speaker and you can listen to it. Do I hear a high frequency? What, when does it, when do I not hear the frequencies? You could do it that way. If you have a fancy scope like this, it has a uh, Bode plots built in. I think I showed that before. We'll go ahead and run one here. All right. So that took a couple minutes and, uh, this is the frequency response of the system. Uh, we have 10 Hertz to hundred kilohertz. And it goes along just fine, and then it starts to roll off, and that's when it attenuates. And so we can use our cursor, and we can come out here to the 3 dB point, which is about there, and we can say this filter rolls off about 2 kilohertz, okay? So does that make any sense, 2 kilohertz? I don't know. I just found some components on the bench, and I threw them in there, and I made a filter that's a 2 kilohertz filter. Good for me. Um, this phase information... You know, even to this day, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I have no clue. I really under, I, I understand it, but I don't know how to effectively use it. Okay. There are things called poles and zeros and roll off and in order to make a system stable and all, you know, if you had a feedback, there's, 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 if you really need to be an engineer, go to engineering school, right? Um, but if you just want to putter in your garage and do things, and I've designed products that were sold on the, on the open market, and I don't know what this damn face shit does, right? I just don't know. And it didn't matter to me. It just didn't matter. Um, so uh, there's a lot of electronics that you don't need to understand to get by. <laughs> there might become, there might be a point in time where you really need to know something, right? Like I was designing an amplifier the other day. I think was interested in, um, I was interested in microphones and all the microphones have JFET transistors in them, right? And JFET transistors are strange beasts. They're very, very strange. And I thought about doing videos on JFET transistors and stuff, but I, I, I decided not to for whatever reason. But you know, I asked my friends who were like dyed in the wool electrical engineers and uh, you know, they're a lot more engineering than I am. And I asked them, well, well teach me about these, these JFET amp, you know, JFET transistors. And they go, well, I've never really had a chance to use them. <laughs> and they didn't know, they didn't know. Um, and so a lot of electronics is going to come down to, you will learn it when you need it. Okay. Don't worry about it. You will learn it when you need it. I mean, you need to get some basic things out of the way. But a lot of times, if you get to a point where you're needing to solve some type of a, a problem in your design, go research it. At that point in time, it is time to become the expert. Go read a book, go to a website, go try to figure it out. I need to figure out what filters are. Oh, I start reading about filters. Oh, there's things called Bessel filters and Butterworth filters and Chebyshev filters. Oh, and, and then you start reading more and more and more about them and you become a filter expert. Enough, enough of an expert in order to get your job done. You know, and then the next time somebody will ask you, you say, oh, well, I think you should put in a sixth order Chevy shove. And then people will think you're super smart. No, you're not super smart. You just have more knowledge than they do. <laughs> All right. So, you know, there is our, um, there's our low pass. Um, I was going to do this all on camera, but I don't think it really matters. Uh, not for what I want the video to be. So, um, I could, I could then take that capacitor and all I have to do is move it. I just move it from here and I put it in the front and it turns into a high frequency, uh, a high pass filter, right? 
and then I put in two filters. I keep the one I already had, and I keep this one too. I put them both in there, and guess what? Poof! It, it magically turns into a bandpass filter. It goes up, and then it goes down. Right? This one stays high, and then it goes low. This one goes low, and then it goes high. This one goes up, and then it goes down. And you see that on the oscilloscope. You play with it, or you hear it. Uh, like you could use this to like uh, emphasize a particular frequency of sound that you want. You know, if it's a spoken voice, maybe you make a a, a peak. You know, at three thousand hertz or something. Maybe at two thousand, it's even better. Right? Be better for your voice. Anyway, you play with it. You try it. You do it. <laughs> do. Um, anyway, that's kind of the point of the video. Just go do. Um, and then we'll we'll end it with going the next step. Okay. So step one, get a gut feel for it. Here are some circuits that do filtering. Okay, and I'll put those in my brain. If I see those things, I'm kind of familiar with them. Why do they work? Well, there's a capacitor and only high, high goes through a capacitor. DC won't go through the capacitor, but AC will go through the capacitor. High frequency will go through. So that's the high pass filter, right? Whenever you put a high pass in a feedback, it does exact opposite. It becomes a low pass. And then if you put them together, um, if you have a high pass and a low pass both together, hey, guess what? You're going to end up with a band pass, right? And so that's just the gut feel. That's what you need to get out of this thing. So what is the step? What is the second step? The second step is, um, okay, math. It is important to learn the math, but don't learn it first. Learn it like second or third, right? You know, safety third, like math third. <laughs> Keep the math down to a minimum, right? It says, um, okay, it says gain. It gives us an equation for gain. And that is equal to minus R1 divided by R2. Why is there a negative sign? Because it's an inverting amplifier. And then R1 over R2, well, that's just the regular, uh, you know, amplifier part of this thing. Forget the capacitor, it's just R1 over R2. It's the same as it's always been. The capacitor doesn't have anything to do with any of that in there, right? That's, that's the gain of the system. And then it, it has a cutoff frequency. So frequency like cutoff, and it says that is equal to 1 over 2 pi r1c. And you're going to go, oh, math, ah, math. That's OK. If you're afraid of math, that's fine. And a lot of times you don't need to know the math. But if you want to get in easy, OK, do simple, do little simple things like this first. Don't go into all the crazy math right away. Just do simple things, OK? So what do we have here? Well, we have 2 pi. OK, we know what that is. R, it's my 10K. It's my favorite resistor, 10K. And what is it? What's C? It's my favorite capacitor, 0, 1 microfarads, OK? And I just need to punch this into a calculator. Um, so let's do that. Um, we have 2. We have pi. We have 10,000. And we have 0 0.01 micros. And we have 1 over that. And it says 1.6 kilohertz, okay, as e to the 3, so that's k. So 1.6 kilohertz. So what did we measure? 2. Does that mean we're doing something wrong? No, we're not doing anything wrong, okay? Capacitors have a tolerance. They're not going to be exactly 0 0.01. Resistors have a tolerance. They're not going to be exact, okay? You spent... You spent 20 cents on your circuit. <laughs> Is it going to be any good? It's going to be okay. And then you measured it maybe in a crude way, right? Is 1.6 about the same as 2? Yeah, they're the same. <laughs> okay, so don't get stuck up on making everything super accurate. And if you had this in an audio circuit, would you hear the difference between a 2 kilohertz roll-off filter and a 1.6 kilohertz roll-off filter? No. <laughs> Nobody's going to hear that. Um, so um, anyway. Well, I don't know if that helped. Um, the video didn't really turn out the way that I really want it to. You know, it's, I had these visions of imparting certain knowledge, and sometimes it's just very, very difficult to get it across. Um, but uh, anyway, I hope it help, helped a little bit. You know, just find things and hook them up and just play with them. You know, don't worry. Don't worry about the theory. Just try things out and, you know, put, put an extra thing in, right? Well, what if I do this? What does that do, right? Um, you don't need to stick to the script. <laughs> um, but uh, like I said, most important thing is go do.